a few months since I recorded my Learn to Backside 50-50 Grind video. Since then, I've been having quite a frustrating time because sometimes I can do the backside 50-50 grind and other times it completely eludes me. There was one session in Mount Hawk where I got particularly frustrated, what can only be described as a disgraceful display, and I decided I needed to take action and have a period of focused practice to see if I could really get inside the 50-50 grind. The 50-50 grind I've got my heart set on is a really fast 50-50 grind, lots of length on the grind, and then coming back in with good speed. I think it looks best if the whole manoeuvre flows right the way through, and that's something I've been struggling with. I chose to standardise my canvas, which was the bowl at the local indoor skate park, so I could go and practise rain or shine. This bowl has the advantage of having a 21-foot piece of straight coping to grind down and the setup is really nice because it's a seven foot corner you can pump out of which means you can get enough speed to fire in to that nice long straight piece of rail at the end of that rail is a corner also possible to nick a bit of that corner on the way back in should you do the full 21 foot I think the reason I've been finding the 50-50 grind so tricky is there's lots of component pieces that all need to be strung together in order to make the manoeuvre work. If only one of those pieces is slightly wonky, it causes more trouble further down the line and can end in disaster. Let's talk through the component pieces one by one. First up, speed. Speed on entry is really important to get a long grind too much speed though and you can fly up the top and not enough speed and you might not be able to get in for the lock-in. So generating speed and going fast is your friend for getting a nice long grind. Number two, the line and the angle of entry. The angle of entry is really important. If you come up too steep on the angle, it's quite tricky to carry that momentum across and get a long grind. But if you go too shallow, there is a chance that you won't be able to hook on for the coping. So it's all about judging the speed and balancing the amount of speed you have with the angle. Obviously, the faster you're going, the less angle you can take to get up to the coping, and that will result in a really nice long grind because of the momentum. If you come in with not so much speed, you might need to go steeper in order to make it to the coping to get locked in, but that won't end up in such a long grind. Number three, locking in. I found the key here for locking in is to do a nice big manual to so get the front wheels right off of the transition and wait for that back foot to lock onto the coping. You can feel the wheel come over the top of the coping on that back foot and as you do so it's then time to stamp the front foot forwards. Next point is foot pressure during the grind. Number four, I find it best to try and keep some weight on the back foot and then just offer the front foot in. There's quite a few times that I just put too much front foot pressure on and it just ends up running off the front. The front truck digs in and you end up running off. So getting those foot pressures just right is really important. Number five, the shoulder is my biggest enemy. As I come up for the grind, I always open up my shoulders. And as I do so, the front truck becomes unlocked off the coping and the board swivels off. It's really annoying and I know what I need to do. I just don't have the strength to do it, as Kylo Ren once said. Just need to keep that shoulder tucked in and it keeps the board grinding along the coping. It keeps the wheels locked in there. Number six, coming back in. I find it quite tricky to axle back in with a lot of speed because it's quite scary. So that's something I've had to really train up to, still be going forward nice and fast and then axling back in. Again, the key is the shoulder and manualing the board up in the air. Also, it helps if the back wheel is hooked onto the coping to start with. I've seen quite a lot of guys axle with the opposite wheel 
against the coping and that works fine as long as you've got lots of toe pressure and you've got good technique. But I've been going for the version where the heel is stamping on the wheel on the coping and then I just release that heel pressure as I kick turn back in, keeping the shoulder into the turn, try and keep the knees bent and she should come off a treat. With these key points in mind, I started working on my goal of grinding the full 21 foot length. First up, I standardised my line by calf grinding the corner, front side coming in. This gave me good speed on exit and also gave me the same line and angle into the coping each time. Next thing I concentrated on was a double whammy of a good manual on the back foot combined with keeping the front shoulder tucked in on the coping and under no circumstances opening up. This stopped the board coming off of the coping and the front wheel stayed locked in if I kept that front shoulder in line with the rail. As I was grinding, I was mindful of my foot pressures, trying to keep that back foot a bit more weighted. And that was the key to getting a longer grind once everything was locked in, just get those foot pressures right. And then the final thing was axling off, still with speed. Let's take a look at the progress as it happened. few thrills and spills along the way but we got there in the end I found that when I got all of the component pieces just right managed to get the full length right into the corner and back in and it felt so good oh my gosh I was eager to test out the work I'd done on some of my other favorite spots so I took a trip down to the Mount Hawk mini ramp that ramp has the advantage of having a seven foot drop in and then you can cut across over onto the five foot part, which has another nice long piece of coping to grind down. There are a few thrills and spills along the way. Took me a little bit of time just to establish my line, my speed, make sure I got my manual right. I was also sticking quite a lot on the front foot because I was slamming that down too hard. So that different piece of coping just needed slightly different foot pressures but we got there in the end. Let's take a look at that progress in action. up I have of late become quite fascinated with the seven foot mini ramp it's a really lovely feeling swooping in and out very challenging and obviously the danger factor is that much higher those bales oh my gosh I thought it would be a worthy challenge to finish up trying to get a few backside 50 50 grinds up on that seven foot section <laughs> OK, 
Okay, that's it for the improve your backside 50-50 grind video. Let's run through the key points in real time. Establish your line and your speed. Coming in, get the right angle. Manual the front wheels high in the air. Click the back wheel on. Bring your shoulder in line with the coping as you put the front wheels down. Foot pressures to keep the grind going. As you come, get ready to axle back in. Keep the speed up. Front foot pivots off. Keep your knees bent. Shoulder into the turn and ride away. Whew. Those challenges were a lot of fun. I really enjoyed having the goal of trying to get the entire length of coping. Gave a good sense of achievement and finality when I finally cracked all the techniques I needed to get that full 21 foot on the bowl coping. Also enjoyed the trip to Mount Hawk. There were some frustrations there because I raised my expectations and thought, oh, I've done a lot of work on this. I should be able to do this first time. And of course I didn't. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe. I make new videos every week. As ever, my name's been John Bishop and I'm a middle-aged guy learning how to skate. Oh, 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 oh,